hello. I just hopped on and uh, we didn't quite catch Heather fast enough and I didn't want to waste everyone's time. So we're trying again. This is Entrepreneurs with Erin, episode 12. And um, we're having Heather Ringel Pie Bass on. And I just had a cloud pass over. Oh, there's the lighting. Woo! Um, and Heather is passionate about childhood literacy. And for those of you who are curious, yes, I already did an Entrepreneurs with Erin this week, um, but it was a makeup, so we're doing two this week. And uh, this is my 12th week. So, let's see if my phone, phone picks her up. It did say she was watching um, after I left, but for some reason I could not add her. So if anybody's out there, um, Give me a shout out and it's probably some update on Facebook that like it's not working anymore, right? So hi guys, what can I tell you today? How are you guys doing? Oh, there she is. Now I can add you. So yeah, so Heather, uh, she's the book lady. She sells us born books and she, um, I can't wait for her to hop on here and tell us more because I know she's been doing it a while. Um, hi, Lindsay. Um, we're trying to invite Heather on to watch. Oh, says so she's connecting. There we go. Hi. <laughs> little technical difficulties this morning or afternoon well Ooh. I know you told me to have the phone a certain um I kept trying to say yes join join and it's like rotate your phone and I'm like what do you mean figured it out so <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yes welcome to Yay! thanks for having me this is so fun um and Heather also organized the winery event I was at, um, I guess about two weeks ago now. So that was super fun. And yeah. she was doing that to raise money for um, Toys for Tots, right? But specifically for books, Books for Tots. Yeah. Book drive for Toys for Tots, specifically Snohomish County. So everything from um, basically Arlington down to Bothell throughout Snohomish, Monroe, Duval, just that entire area. Okay. And how long have you been the book lady selling books? Well, I started when my son was 10 months old. Um, I went to a, a party when he was nine months old. And when, when he was born, my husband and I decided that he was going to have the love of books we had when we were little because, I mean, that's what we did when we were little, right? That we didn't have video games. We didn't have all this technology. So, I mean, you played outside and then you had books. So when I went to this party, it was like, oh my gosh, these books are fantastic. And after spending way too much, I came home and I told my husband, so, and he was like, what are you going to do? <laughs> and so um, in October, it was actually uh, four years. Four years. Four years since I took the leap. Yes. Yes. Congratulations. Thanks. Um, and... And you travel around, I know you put up, set up shop in various places. Um, where are you at? Where can people find you, for example? So I'm in Bothell, and as you can see behind me, I do have quite a bit of a selection all the time. So I um, absolutely love to have people come into my office and do um, shopping for books, you know, right here. Um, a friend of mine, Marlon, actually came a couple days ago, and it's nice to do that because you're not – you know, thinking about going to maybe an event with a lot of people, finding parking, all of that. It's just kind of a one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm in Bothell and more than happy to do one-on-one -on -one shopping. And you're like a um, little personal bookstore. Yeah, personal bookstore. And then you just have me one-on-one -on -one versus sometimes when you're at an event, you don't really get to have that one-on-one -on -one and really talk about 
uh, your child's interests, where their reading levels are, and really get that that perfect recommendation. But you still get to like take them out and look at them, and I like that part of it. You know, I'm tactile. Yeah, I'm looking at kids' books. And I think that's really the the key with Usborne books is people say. I didn't know like how special they were until I actually held one in my hand or I took it home to my child. Mm -hmm. um, I like to joke that you put one in your hand and you kind of start feeling this like, zzz, zzz, <laughs> like power of an Usborne book. Um, so seeing them online or even in a catalog is just so different than actually being able to see them in person. Yeah. Especially if I have no, I mean, I don't know the whole lineup, but they, um, the sticker books I was thinking of and the coloring books are just really nice, high quality. And um, the other ones that were so popular with my kids when they were really little are those touch and feel ones. The That's My. Oh, yeah. um, and that series is from Usborne. So, yep. because um, Usborne also sells their books in bookstores, but then they also sell that through you, a traveling bookstore. <laughs> yeah. We have um, like, 12% of our 2000 plus titles available in very, very small select retail. So okay. like at Barnes Noble, there might be like eight titles um, at specialty like museums and um, different things like that. There will be specific to if it's a train museum, there's a few train books, right? If science museum, there's a few science books. So there really isn't a way to see all of the titles unless you have a book lady because you're just going to see, you know, very specific percentage of retail out there. Yeah. But I do like to point those out because I feel like everybody has those. That's not my books, you know, when their kids are like one and they're really good. The kids love them. And, um, and so you may have an Usborne book and not even know it. <laughs> the, the number one book that everybody always says, Oh my gosh, that's Usborne publishing is everyone poops. Oh Yeah. That book has been around like 20 something years. And when people see it at a booth, they go, wait, that's an Usborne book. I'm like, it sure is, but nobody knew us 20 years ago. So that's kind of cool when they can introduce their, sometimes I get like, I'm going to introduce my grandkids since I had these for my kids when I was little. So it's kind of nice to see that. That is fun. And um, what else do you do? I know you, um, you also have the cards. Like what besides yeah. books, what's the, what's the, um, the bonus that you have to provide? So we do, we do the books and you can do various things with the books. You can host your own show. I have people who do party for a purpose and maybe that's, you know, hosting a party to donate to like a toys for tots. Um, you know, one of our mutual friends, Eileen did a book fundraiser to donate to a brand new elementary right. school. And I bought that so, one to donate. I, well, I bought books yeah. for the school and then she also earned books from that to donate to the school. So yeah. Like, so there's, there's opportunities that way. Um, we do have a cards for a cause fundraiser. I happen to have them right here. Two seconds. So basically the cards for a cause is a really good fundraiser where um, you get handmade and they come in plastic beautiful cards and you get 30 in a really nice box and the organization earns $13 a box wow. and that's just cash to the organization um usually when I have a group sign up they say well everybody needs cards yeah. I mean at, at what point in a year are you not sending multiple cards so the minimum for the fundraiser is 15 boxes of cards and you get 30 for $30. Okay. So looking at that card, you think to yourself, where are you going to get a card like that for a dollar? Yeah, no, I mean, cards are like three, four, five, seven dollars. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a really great fundraiser. I've had everybody from, I've had um, families who are raising money for adoption. I uh -oh. have schools that are raising money for the PTA. I've had, I mean, just a wide variety of people who, um, we, we don't have like a stipulation of you have to be this to be able to do the fundraiser. Yeah, that's a great idea. And their universe, I did, I think I have a box of your cards so that because something comes up and you're like, oh yeah, I should get a card for, and then you already have, yeah. it. you're good to go. And they, I think you got, did you get the thanks and blanks or the all occasion? Thanks and blanks, I believe. Thanks and blanks. That's a great one because you, I mean, I think I send more thank you cards than any cards being in my business. I'm always sending thank you cards. And then it's nice to just have a blank 
because you just never know what you want to say on a card. And it's nice to just have a beautiful blank card. Yes. Um, so what can you tell us? You've been in business for four years. Your son is mm -hmm. then probably five if you got him. He's going to be five next week. So he's going into kindergarten next year. Yes. Same with my little one. That's she's a, she just turned four, but, um, what, what do you feel like you've learned from being with bu a business woman and having your own business? Like, what can you share with us as an You know, I think the biggest thing that anybody ever, you know, says, well, what do you think is like the biggest thing or the biggest takeaway is it really everything so I also have a full-time job and so you know I'm full-time job team leader with Usborne books I have a child I have a husband I have a house you know all of these things that you're like okay what takes precedence so I really schedule my business out yeah um I have a monthly planner and it really is about, if I write down this thing on Wednesday, that is what I accomplish. Um, and I think it's really easy in business nowadays to, you you start that, but then, oh, this comes up and then, oh, look at that email and then look at this and then nothing gets done, right? So I literally just say, I write one thing on every day that I'm gonna be in this office and at least at the end of the week, I know I accomplished five to seven things that are done because I wrote down one thing. Right. And that's, that's the biggest thing because my first two years, I mean, I was just trying to be like multitasking wonder woman. You know, I'd have, that doesn't work. My, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Right. I have my laptop and my computer on the same desk. I'd be doing something here, something here, you know, I'd have multiple, um, you know, emails open. I'm just going to write all of these at once. And I would seriously just at the end of the day go, I think I did nothing. I did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was kind of how I had to group, um, group differently what I was trying to accomplish. And then of course, once you grow your business and you get a bigger team and you be, you become, I'm a team leader now, there's even more to where now you have to coach your team. Right. And, you know, you got to throw that into there where you're like, well, I will have my own business, but now I need to coach. So um, it, it's, it is definite time management, but not necessarily time management with everything in your life, time management with your business. That's great advice. I missed the very beginning because, like, I, I got a call and I had to, like, get rid of them. But, um, <laughs> and I was like, no, we're going to, but I think I caught it. I think I got it at the end. <laughs> Manage your time which is something that I'm working on. And it's just so easy when you're at home to get distracted and, and then somebody calls you or, right. Um, you know, especially with social media and being kind of available to everybody 24 seven, it's very easy to kind of psh, 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 all the different directions. And then you're like, Oh, <laughs> I still haven't done that thing that I put on my. Yeah. Two weeks ago. One thing. And I think the other thing, the biggest thing too, I've learned is, I mean, sometimes you have to say no. And I think that that, you know, in having the business, having your own business, you want to say yes to everybody, right? Because you're like, I want to make everybody happy. I want to build relationships with everybody. I want to do every event. I, I just want to say yes, yes, yes. And um, I've learned that as, as one person and multiple things in my life, I just can't do everything. And so I've had to say no to certain events or I've had to say no to you know, I'm very passionate about fundraising and I've had to say no to, you know, items that have come up because I'm doing a fundraiser. So it's just really about um, learning that you're one person and as much as you wish that you could do in a day, you just can't. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's great self-care as well. Just knowing, I feel like you have to know what you're good at right. um, and what's, you know, important, what's going to feed you the most. And then say no to the other things, <laughs> you know, like, well, you're always talking about self care and it's like, how can you be the best for your business and the best for your clients? If you're exhausted, overrun, overworked, I mean, you just can't, you cannot give the best to the people that you're trying to build your business with. And so I'm, I'm truly, 
um, one of those who have changed that complete aspect of my business because I used to be that one where it was like, I am so tired, you know, and I probably didn't give my customers the best when I first started. And so I think self-care is huge just to be the best businesswoman you can right, be. Not just even, I, I talk about it a lot with being a parent, right? Like doing that self-care because you can't be your best mom or be the best mom to your children if you're not taking care of you or you're be the best wife to your husband if you're not taking care of you. But um, this is like a whole nother layer. Like you can't be the best business owner and be the best to your clients and give um, the best customer service that you want to give if you're run down either. So I love yep. that. Um, yep. Good. Well, I don't want to run too long. Do you have any um, specials that are coming up? Um, I know Black Friday's next week, a week from today. Yeah. Um, I did want to give you guys one huge statistic that is kind of like my go-to statistic when everybody says, well, why books? I mean, there's so many things out there you can do um, as a businesswoman. Why books? And this, this um, statistic, there's been a 20-year global study for children that have within their lifetime at least 500 books that they have gone through in their first um, 18 years um, – complete an average of 3.2 more years of education, mm. which then relates to almost $22,000 in additional income. And yes. I think that that statistic is even more huge now because books just aren't as prevalent in homes as they used to be. And so I, I try to get that statistic out as much as I can so that people understand. I mean, right now at five years old, I am really putting my son on the right path to make more money when he's ready to enter the job market. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, I don't think about that as a, you know, like a financial investment. I always think about obviously the educational and, and having a love of learning and um, just having that imagination built, you know, cause you can you create those sort of uh, worlds with your mind when you're reading. Uh, I know. But yeah, that's and then, and then there's like apparently practical, you know, there's another twenty some thousand dollars a year. I know. It's like, hmm, do I want that? Hmm. I have so many books. Our kids are like they're busting out of the closet. I need to like go through and weed out the younger ones and donate them. <laughs> donate them. And get more. Um, but to answer your question, I will post my link. Um, if anybody's interested in joining my VIP group, I share statistics kind of like what I've shared there. And that's where I share, um, you know, just lots of fun when it comes to our Osborne books. I share um, games and that's where I post all my specials. And right now I do have a mystery hostess party going on. It's just kind of a fun way to keep in touch with everything that I'm doing. So if, if something I've said today resonated with you and you'd love to join that group, I will post it here. Um, and that's where you'll hear about all my specials. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Heather, and I will see you in person tomorrow because I know you too. Thanks, Erin. Bye. See you later.